What's going on everybody? Today we're going to look at seven iOS developer portfolios. I'm going to kind of review them and hopefully you get some inspiration or ideas for your own portfolio. And if you don't think you need an online website to showcase your work, I would argue that you do. As iOS developers, we create very visual products in these iOS or iPad apps or Mac apps that we make. And we need a way to showcase that for potential employers or people to hire you for freelance work. So again, hopefully you get some inspiration and ideas from this video. And when it comes time to put up that website, check out today's sponsor, squarespace.com to get that portfolio up and running very quickly. All right, let's dive into these portfolios. First up, we have Daniel Ryling with a, uh, a GitHub portfolio. I'm starting to see these more and more and I kind of like them. So it's essentially uh, just a, a well-designed GitHub readme, but uh, I like his layout, right? You, you get the picture. Uh, Daniel Ryling, his face, you can see his projects. I kind of wish there was a little blurb under your name, Daniel, just to learn more about you. Because again, oftentimes when you're, you're looking to hire somebody, especially at a small startup, like when I was doing the hiring, yes, I care about your technical skills, but I also care about you. Like as a small startup, you work in a small team. So like you got to get along. Uh, so I would like a little blurb, you know, maybe just two or three sentences. Don't make it super long. Just telling me about you, Daniel. Like, I have no idea who you are, what you're into, what you do. I uh, would like a little blurb there. But overall, I think this is very nicely laid out, straight and to the point, not a lot of fluff. Show me your work. I like that. Uh, again, I just kind of wish there was maybe just a little blurb under each of these projects telling me what the app does. Because like some of these, I mean, I guess I can try to kind of figure out what the app does. Like this kind of looks like a, a jobs app, maybe. Um, like this is a look like a Tinder card for Yelp. Like, like I, I have to figure it out. Um, and I always say with these portfolios, like you should keep the audience in mind. Make it very, very easy for them to find the information you want them to find. Again, I, this is very nicely laid out, straight to the point. I just wish there was a blurb uh, telling me what the app does, and then maybe something unique about the app. Like I'm looking at this. So maybe the blurb, you know, can be telling you what the app does and like something technically unique, like, hey, I implemented the, the Tinder card swiping mechanic uh, with the Yelp API. But again, I really like what you've done here, Daniel. Again, quick and to the point, I just wish there was a little more information so I don't have to dig and I don't have to try to figure it out on my own. So like I said, give me a little blurb about you up here, uh, a little small two or three sentences uh, about the app. And I think this is this is great. Next up, we have one from Stuart Lynch, and he submitted this back when I did this a couple months ago um, on a live stream, and he, he implemented a lot of the feedback, which I, I love to see. So he has a lot of apps, I believe 10 on the App Store. So this is an example of somebody who has a lot of projects. I do like that you upgraded your, your phone pictures, because last time my feedback with him was he had he had like the old iPhone 6, 7, or 8. Like now you have to have the notch. Like just, it just looks old and outdated if you have the old phone. Um, we'd like to see newer iPads, but you know, we're, we're getting there. Two nitpicks about this initially is it feels cramped to me. Like I always like to see what they look like on mobile too. And I was doing this so like this, oh, we'll get there, we'll get there, we'll get there. Come on, come on. There it is. Like this spacing feels good to me, right? How the, you got a lot of spacing in between it. You can focus on each project. When it's like this, everything's just like so cramped. Um, so again, minor nitpick, but it, it does look good on mobile. I always want to like check these, uh, cause you got to make sure it's good on mobile now in 2019. Um, but no, overall good stuff. What I like about Stewart's is when you click on his find out more, you know, you get the, the singular app page. You can really dive in good, nice pictures. Again, the updated phone to the iPhone, you know, the notch look, but what I like that Stuart does is you get great visuals. You can really learn about the, uh, the app, but he has videos uh, about his app with voiceover and you can't hear it because my setup, but like, this is literally Stuart's voiceover talking about his app. We'll skip through it a little bit. Maybe like two minutes might be a little long, not sure, but it's him going through the app, explaining it with a voiceover. Like this is, this is awesome for somebody that's like looking to hire you. They can see exactly what you did, how you explain your app. It's also good for potential customers, people looking to buy your app. They can see it right away. So, and he's done this for, uh, like I said, all of his, all of these apps. So much improved, Stuart. I really like what you did. I kind of wish, I, I know your, where's your face? Here's your face. You have to hit about uh, create tech. I kind of wish your face was like, I could see you. Like if I wanted to learn about you here up front, like maybe have a little blurb about you and then your projects. Um, but minor, minor nitpick. Uh, another minor nitpick. This is, so anyway, Stuart, big picture, much improved. Really like the direction you're going. Uh, I wish it wasn't so cramped, but um, yeah, the last minor nitpick is the, the white text on this really light blue button. 
probably not enough contrast there. Uh, maybe think of a darker button color just to give more contrast. Sometimes to find out more is a little hard to read, but overall, I like what you did. Really love the videos explaining each app in depth. I think that that goes way above and beyond. All right, next up we have Eilish. Uh, it says, hello, I'm Eilish. I'm an iOS engineer, design, develop. So this, this looks cool. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I love the way this looks, but I also feel it's 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 time wasting. Like you're, you're kind of making the person scroll down to like see, like I just scroll way down to even see your picture. Um, and I fall into this habit sometimes too, of just making something that looks cool. It's, it, it's aesthetics over function, where it's I think you should have function and aesthetics. Anyway, I would get rid of this top part. As cool as it looks, I get it. I would get rid of that and just get right into the meat. And again, I would put your face up top because this is about you. This is your portfolio. People want to know about you just as much as your project. So I would move your face to the very top of this about section. Um, I kind of read your, your fast, responsive, intuitive de deployment. Like these are all like table stakes for developers, I guess, like deploying a mobile app. Like I would hope so. Uh, strong preference for easy to use and intuitive UI UX. I would hope so. Like this is nothing like special about you. This is all like baseline developer stuff. So I don't mind having like quick little tidbits about you, but make them unique. Like what's special about you? Um, that's what I would go with. Again, uh, layouts will work on any device, big or small. Yeah, I, I hope they do. <laughs> like, so these are just basic skills. I would I would change this to something unique about you. And then another pet peeve of mine is this here, the, the percentage setups. This gives the person like no context, like 90, you're 95% Swift. You know 95% of all of Swift or is this relative to your other skills? Like this is just confusing and convoluted. Anytime you see somebody give like a graph, a chart, it's just, it's almost meaningless. Like, I, you know, it's, it's so hard to tell what that is. In my opinion, you're much better off saying Swift and then like telling examples of what you've built in Swift, what you've done with Swift. This 95% tells me nothing. So anyway, just a little note, if you have one of these on your, your portfolio, I would get rid of it. Um, and then cool, yeah, you have your, your projects here, uh, visit in the store, visit in the store. So uh, yeah, good stuff. Again, I would, so you only you have three major sections, right? You have just the pretty picture, then you have the information, and then you have your projects, right? The information in the projects are the most important thing, yet you make me scroll all the way to the bottom to find it. And if you've seen anything about like websites, the more you make somebody scroll, just statistically, the less, the more drop off you have right? Like a hundred percent of the people that visit your website see this. And it's probably like 60% of the people that visit your website see this because you make them scroll all the way down. Um, so anyway, I, I would just ditch this entire top section, get right into this. So the next portfolio we're about to review was actually created with Squarespace. So it's a perfect time to thank them for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to get your developer portfolio website up and running very quickly. And as you're about to see in this next portfolio, it can look great. Squarespace has tons of themes to choose from. And they also have website analytics, all the SEO, that stuff's all taken care of for you. So again, let's get back to building our apps. Let Squarespace handle your website. So head on over to squarespace.com to start your free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Sean Allen to get 10% off your first website or domain. All right, let's move on to Chris Hefferman's portfolio that was built uh, with Squarespace. So here it is, Chris Hefferman, uh, an iOS developer with 18 months experience. Uh, he's got the little blurb about him. Uh, I've been using Apple products for over a decade, yada, 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 the portfolio. Uh, love these pictures. I'm a little biased. These are the same same pictures I use on my portfolio. But again, they're just nice looking modern phones. You get to show two screenshots. Uh, I think they look really good. Um, I, w I wish there was more space between each project. It feels a little cramped vertically. Um, let's check. Uh, okay, looks pretty good mobile. Like mobile moves them side to side. Um, but uh, one piece of information here is I do wish like centered text it is hard to read when there's a lot of it. You see how this is all centered. I would align it left. And then here you have technologies used that kind of blends in with the, the um, all the other text. I would definitely either make this bold, underline it, do whatever you want to do to make this stand out. Because again, these should be highly skimmable, right? Uh, meaning somebody coming to this should be able to just skim this real quick. And you want technologies used to stand out because that's kind of, you know, what shows off your technical skills. So definitely take care of that, make that stand out. And then back to the top here, an iOS developer with 18 months experience. I, I think you're wasting this opportunity right here. This is the first thing they're going to read. And like, this doesn't like, I, I would put something unique about you. Like, I don't know, a passionate developer with great design skills. I don't know, so, something that like really makes you stand out because 18 months experience, that's, I don't know, you can definitely put that in this little blurb, but that shouldn't be like your main value proposition you're presenting, right? You want this line to really pack a punch 
that makes you special. I don't know what that is, Chris, but <laughs> just a developer with 18 months experience, it's kind of boring. Um, so yeah, make this pack a punch and, and tell somebody exactly what you're all about. But overall, this is a nice clean website. Like I said, this is the one built with Squarespace. Uh, nice and clean, I love minimalism. I wish there was more negative space in between, uh, like I said. And then you do give the about you with the picture. I'm a big fan of showing the picture of your face. I know some people don't do that. Maybe they're not into that, but especially showing your face with something you're into. Like Chris is a self-confessed geek. He says he's really into Lord of the Rings. Here he is at, you know, I don't know, that's in New Zealand, I believe. Uh, the, the Hobbit house. I don't know anything about Lord of the Rings, but uh, show your interest because just, people just relate to that. Um, so that's a good stuff to show you and your personality, what you're into outside of development. But overall, good website, Chris. Uh, again, those are the tips. Make technologies you stand out more. Align this left because it's hard to read centered text uh, through a while and just give more negative space. But overall, really clean, simple, and to the point. Again, the main point I want to drive home is think of the reviewer's time. Uh, you know, don't make them dig. Make things very obvious and easy for them to find. Moving on, let's talk about David She's site. So I, I like we get the picture of him right away and then hit the quick value prop, right? This is kind of what I was saying about Chris's. I'm an iOS developer who's naturally curious and passionate about I guess there should be a T there. <laughs> Maybe you should fix the typo uh, about software uh, development. Um, but again, that can probably even be more unique to you, like passionate about software development. That's kind of boring, but this is a great opportunity. Naturally curious is is good. That's that's a good thing. I would I would replace passionate about software development with something else that's like unique to you. But overall, I think you're halfway there. Um, good about me. I feel like this is a bit long because uh, again, got to be skimmable, got to be quick. Uh, not, it's not too long though. I would actually probably ditch one of these paragraphs or, or, you know, consolidate them two into one smaller one. Um, can, you can learn more to go to the, the LinkedIn. So what I wanted to showcase David's is he makes good use of animated GIFs on his website. Uh, so you see, you can see the app in action. Like, don't get me wrong. Screenshots are great. Never going to knock you for screenshots, but having an animated GIF showing your app in action, you can see the animations, you can see how it's used, uh, whether it's a video animated GIF. Uh, that always goes above and beyond. So really like that. Uh, but I do feel like this here is all cluttered. Um, there's no like visual hierarchy. Like maybe make the, I, I see this is like a little different font weight. It's a little bigger. I would make it more drastic. Um, but I do like what you do. You give a quick pro, uh, summary of the project. You say what you did on the project. I mean, this is mirroring my portfolio. So of course I'm going to be a little biased, but I, I do think it's good. Summarize the project, say what you did. Because remember, if you're working on a team, like you can't just, like if I was worked at Instagram, I can't just show off the whole Instagram app and be like, look, I built Instagram. Just say what you did on that project. In this case, he was the sole uh, developer. So cool, say that. If you worked on a team of four, say that and then say what you specialized in on the app. So they don't get any like misperception as to like what you did, right? You're not like claiming you built the whole app when you didn't. Um, so yeah, I wanted to showcase this for the animated gifts. I think these are really, really great. If you really wanted to take this to the next level, and I know these, this is probably one image with them side by side, but if you could get like an iPhone frame, so it actually looked like it's in a phone, I think that would take this to the next level. But again, this, this is, this is fine. I think you should work on your, your font weights, uh, and like the spacing and, and the sizing to make project summary really stand out in my role. These are two, they're too similar in my opinion. And then, uh, everything is like vertically cramped and cluttered. Um, it's just, it just looks cluttered. Get, get more negative space in there. And then if we look at it on mobile, looks good on mobile. Um, yeah, everything's just vertically cramped. I would uh, put some uh, negative space in there. But again, uh, halfway to a good value prop here on the left, just I would replace passionate about software development. Ideally, we all are. Um, but yeah, good use of animated GIFs. Good stuff, David. Moving on, we have one from Type Patel. It's another GitHub uh, readme. I wanted to showcase this one for one or a couple reasons. Um, uh, so first off, the these if you're going to put screenshots up there, make them interesting. Uh, and please don't take this as bashing, just constructive criticism. These are kind of boring screenshots and they're all relatively the same. Same thing with here. Uh, maybe the app is super simple. I get that. Um, but the screenshots have to be like interesting. Um, so I would work on getting better screenshots. But what I liked about yours is you told the story behind the project, uh, right? Like, or, or, or just more, you made it personal, right? I'm extremely pleased with how this app came out. I'm mainly proud of the bouncy animation that I used to give the user that real ball feeling. Uh, I was built in Xcode, written entirely in Swift 5. I utilize auto layout for UI design, whatever. Um, but the point is, I, I get to hear the story of the app, what you're happy uh, about it, how you built it. You talked about the frameworks you used. This is the kind of information I'm talking about that you should uh, share about the project. And you can see, he did it in three lines. You don't have to write 
a whole paper about what you did. You can sum it up very quickly. So that is what I liked about uh, this portfolio. Like I said, I wish the screenshots were a little better, but you did a great job of you know highlighting the frameworks used and, and again telling the story. You tell what the app did and telling like telling like a little bit of the story behind your app and how you built it. So great job here. Uh, I would again get, get better get better screenshots is what it boils down to, and then you're you're on your way to a, a very good portfolio. Uh, again, this is an example of a GitHub one. And then lastly, let's go on to Henrik Forsberg. He submitted last time as well and gave some updates. Uh, and I looked at this and I have some some glaring things I want to portray to, to Henrik, but definitely much improved uh, from what it was. But uh, the main thing is having your your name stick to the top and. Like I get it, like you want you want people to know who you are, but as you can see as I'm scrolling, and hopefully the viewers see this too, it is just dominating. Like my I have to force my eyes not to look at this giant name as I'm scrolling. Like I'm like, don't look at it, don't look at it, don't look at it. It's just it's way too overpowering. Uh, like get what you were going for, but I would kind of get rid of that uh, thing just because it's again, I, I can't not look at it. It's just it's just begging for my eyes to look. Um, but otherwise, good stuff with the uh, you know the pictures. And uh, same thing, you, you, t you tell what the app is, you say what I did, I was a sole developer, uh, together with a few fellow students, I built the first version of what's cool. Yeah, so you tell what you did, you show the uh, frameworks, find out more, you can click on it, uh, you can go to the app store, and then about you. Uh, I would like to see a picture of your face, I know not everybody's about that, uh, I, I like to see the people. But I would even consider moving that up to the top, like instead of, again, just kind of like wasting the person's time, just like, bam, your name the entire screen, your name. I'm like, uh, and I don't get me wrong. I know my portfolio currently does the same thing. I'm working on changing it. Um, but, uh, it just kind of, I would get right to the point. Or if you're going to have your name there, have this little blurb there too. Maybe this is too much text, but, um, I would have that up there as well incorporated. Uh, again, I want to learn about you and then your projects. Um, but yeah, otherwise it's good. Maybe some more vertical negative space. It feels a little cramped. Just put like some some padding in between these sections, but overall I like it. And I want I wanted to just do this one real quick. To I think you got to get rid of that name. <laughs> it's just way too overpowering. Uh, but again, that's gonna wrap it up. I hope you got some ideas, some inspiration for your portfolio website. Hearing the feedback, I don't claim to be a guru on this stuff. I've just had to review these and hire some people before, and I know people that had a visual portfolio. Like to me, it really stuck out because especially at small startups where I have to wear many hats, I just believe if you can design a good website and market yourself well, you understand the bigger picture. You're not just, I'm a developer and nothing else, which again, that's probably fine if you're at a big company, but I'm, I usually live in the small startup world and you got to be able to wear many hats in a small startup. So uh, not even a small startup, but even if you're like a freelancer contracting, building a whole app by yourself, being able to showcase the entire picture and not just code, uh, I think goes a long way in that circumstance. But anyway, hope you found this helpful. If you like what I'm doing here, consider subscribing. I put out Swift News every Monday and videos throughout the week. See you in the next one.